root locus is a method that's used in design of control systems. In this video, I'm just going to give you a mathematical background for root locus without any context for how it would be used in control systems. In root locus, the goal is to find all of the possible roots of a polynomial. So given some polynomial, for example, x squared plus 3x plus 5k is equal to 0, I want to know what are the roots of this polynomial for all possible values of k. So it's find roots of polynomial for k between 0 and infinity. And we're going to restrict ourselves, at least initially, to positive values of k. You can see if you wanted a negative values of k, the simple solution would be just go back and change the sign on the polynomial. Our technique will be to divide the polynomial into two pieces. One piece, which I'm going to refer to as d of s, it's a polynomial in s, and the other is n of s, which is another polynomial in s. And then I'm interested in what are the roots of the new polynomial d of s plus k n of s is equal to zero, where k varies between zero and infinity. I'm going to make one more restriction. That is that the order of n of s, the order of the polynomial, will be less than the less than or equal to the order of d of s. This is not a mathematical restriction for root locus. It becomes a practical restriction when we start applying this to control systems. Let's first look at the extreme values. So what happens when k is equal to 0? The polynomial d of s plus k n of s equals 0. That goes to 0. So then it's just the roots of d of s. If k is equal to infinity, then we have d of s plus k n of s is equal to 0. And I'll have two cases. One is if the order of d of s equals order of n of s, then you should be able to convince yourself that as k goes to infinity, that the roots of the polynomial are the roots of n of s is equal to zero. Can you see that? We have two polynomials here. The second polynomial is multiplied by a really big number, and so it becomes most important. The second possibility is if the order of d of s is greater than the order of n of s. For example, what if my polynomial looks like this? s plus a1 times s plus a2 plus k is equal to 0. Here is a polynomial, d of s. Here is a polynomial, n of s. In this case, n of s is just equal to 1. It's a very simple polynomial, and the order of n of s is 0. The order of d of s is 2. And the question is, when k is equal to infinity, what are the values of s that make this system equal to 0? Let's just brute force this and apply the quadratic formula. So first I'll expand it, and we have s squared plus s times a1 plus a2 plus a1 a2 plus k is equal to 0. Next, put this into quadratic formula, and we have, now I want to solve this for extremely large values of k. So k goes to infinity. And I'm left with my solutions. S1, S2 is equal to minus A1 plus A2 over 2 plus or minus the square root of A1 plus A2 squared minus 4 A1, A2 plus K. But this is going to infinity. This whole thing is over 2. So you can see the solution s1 and s2 looks like minus a1 plus a2 over 2 plus or minus the square root of minus infinity. What does this tell us? Let's go back to our case when k is equal to infinity. When k is equal to infinity, if the order of d of s and n of s are the same, they are polynomials with the same order, then the solution as k goes to infinity will be the roots of just n of s. In the second order case, what we saw was that if n of s has an order of 0, d of s has an order of 2, then the roots go to some real value plus or minus an imaginary. I'm not going to do any further derivation. I'm just going to write down our rules. Given a polynomial d of s plus k n of s equals 0, roots are at 
d of s equals zero when k is equal to zero. Roots are at n of s when k equals infinity. And the case where the order of d of s is greater than the order of n of s, that's my order of, we'll find that we have roots at infinity number of roots at infinity is equal to the order of d of s minus the order of n of s. We need an example to clarify this. x squared plus 5x plus 6 plus k is equal to 0. The question is, what are all the possible roots for this equation as k varies from 0 to infinity? I'm going to plot those roots. So on the complex plane, I want to plot all possible values. Well, let's start at k is equal to 0. At k is equal to 0, we have the roots of d of s. So what is x squared plus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0? You can do the math. That'll give you x1 and x2 are minus 2 or minus 3. Minus 2 or minus 3. Next question is what happens when k goes to infinity? If you scroll back in your notes, you see that the root goes to the average of the two coefficients, plus or minus a minus infinity. So here we are, the average of the two, plus or minus a minus infinity. So the root does this. This is what the root locus looks like. When k is equal to 0, it's right here. As k increases, the root locus travels along this red line until we get k is equal to infinity. We're right here. The root locus will always be symmetrical in the complex plane because we have system with real coefficients. Therefore, we're always going to have complex conjugate roots. This does not tell us what the value of k is along this path. It only tells us that the only possible roots for this polynomial, if you vary k, are real values between minus 3 and minus 2, or complex values where the real part is minus 2.5, and then there is some corresponding comp imaginary part, and then there is some corresponding imaginary part. You should take this second order equation, vary k, and crank out the numbers yourself and convince yourself that indeed all the possible roots of this polynomial lie on this red line.